So the Golden State Warriors have had just an absolutely rocky season so far. It felt like after that Suns game, they were at complete rock bottom on their year because Draymond hit Yusuf Nurkic, got suspended a few days later, lost to the Clippers, and it's like, all right, is this the end of the Warriors dynasty? Like, are they even going to make it to the playoffs this year? We saw them beat the Kings last year, but then lose to the Lakers. Then they rattled off a three-game winning streak, and just last night, they had a monster performance against the Boston Celtics, won this game in overtime. This was the Trace Jackson Davis breakout game he was a plus 25 and shout out to 2k for finally getting start today in the game this will be my second rebuild with it it only took basically three months after 2k dropped and two months into the NBA season for it to be fully rolled out. So yeah, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We are going to be rebuilding the Golden State Warriors that have had kind of the season from hell this year. Between two Draymond suspensions already after the Rudy Gobert altercation and now Yusuf Nurkic, he's suspended indefinitely. There's been plenty of drama surrounded Clay Thompson. Chris Paul hasn't been super efficient this year. Andrew Wiggins has been one of the worst players in the NBA. Oh, what happened? Because he was so crucial to them in that 2022 championship run he's under one of the worst contracts in the league now he's not even a starter anymore and you could say guys like Moses Moody Jonathan Kuminga and Brandon Pozemski are so much more important to this team right now and obviously in the future so yeah this is going to be a very fun and interesting Warriors rebuild we will have injuries on I would like to get Curry one more ring before he retires I do think this will be Clay's last year as a warrior I think I'm just going to let him walk in free agency and to be honest with you there's a chance I trade Draymond if I feel like Kuminga is that guy going forward. So yeah, I made Draymond suspension for around four to six more weeks. So this is the rotation I'm going with right now while the Splash Bros. Wiggins will still start, but I'm just going to be giving him fewer and fewer minutes. We have Kuminga at the four, Booney at the five, Paul, Moody, Pojemski, Trey Jackson Davis, and Dario Sarge off the bench. I think sooner than later, we will have Moses Moody as the starting small forward, and we're going to bench Wiggins completely. Obviously, we could put Pojemski into the starting five as well, bump Clay down to the three. And Kavon Mooney breaks his right hand. He's going to be out four to six weeks. So I'm going to start Dario Sarge for now, but I think I'm going to go 24 to Trace Jackson Davis, uh, TJD, and then we're going to go probably 24 as well to Sarge. We are 17 and 15 right now. We should be getting Draymond Green back soon. I'm not trading Klay Thompson for Duncan Robinson, even though that could be a smart deal for the Warriors. All right, so we are 19 and 18 now that Draymond Green is back. Klay Thompson has been playing a little bit better as of late. We are going to remove Wiggins from the starting five, which is just wild. What I think I may do is I want to play Kuminga. I think I may start him at the three and Draymond at the four because I don't think I really want to play Draymond as a small ball five. Trace Jackson Davis has also been pretty good in his much more expanded role. So it's pretty much going to be Steph, Clay, Kuminga, Draymond Sarge with Moody, Chris Paul, Pojemski, Wiggins, and Trace Jackson Davis off the bench. I have no idea what I'm going to do at this year's deadline. All right, so this Warriors team is 22 and 28 at the deadline. Our pick is top four protected in the draft. Otherwise, it's going to go to Portland. I don't really know what to do with this team. So in the playing tournament, at least where the Blazers are, we're basically a game out of the 10th spot. And I would like to make the actual playoffs this year. Oh my God, man. Like Clay has been fine. I'm not really going to put this on Clay too much. I like Kuminga. Wiggins is so bad. Oh my goodness. This is going to make this so much more difficult, this rebuild. Chris Paul has been good. Sarge has been okay. Moody, I would like to keep developing. Same with uh, Pojemski and obviously uh, TJD. Kavon Looney, I mean, he could be back next year. I don't really know what to do. We got to get creative. Let's look at the trade block. Okay, Clint Capella is on the trade block. So is Bogdan Bogdanovich and DeAndre Hunter. As much as I would love to get Clint Capella, I'm not getting this deal done unless I'm sending them Wiggins. Why would they want his contract? Chris Paul, but I don't think I want to move CP3. Wiggins, or excuse me, Clay, but I don't think I want to trade Clay. It really is Draymond. I mean, Gary Payton's making eight mil, but I don't want to move Kuminga, Moody, Pojemski. Do I want to move Payton and Looney? I mean, I'm not opposed to that, but I still think we're going to be off a little bit because I got to take somebody back. Yeah, I would be off this trade by $1.47 million. Yeah, it's going to be very tough to get a deal done for Clint Capella, and I don't even know if that's the big man I want. Do we do this trade? Do we send Draymond Green to the LA Lakers to play with his buddy LeBron? <sighs> so I don't mind getting Rui Hashimura, even though it's a deep contract. I don't like D'Lo bringing back to Golden State, right? He was here um, in 2019, but I could probably easily flip D'Lo if I wanted to. 
I just don't know if this is the move I want to make. Hmm, what to do, what to do. I mean, if I'm not going to move Draymond now, I'm probably going to move him in the offseason. So let's just make this trade. We're going to send Gary Payton, Draymond Green to the Lakers for D'Angelo Russell and Rui Hashimura. I mean, that front court defensively of AD and Draymond is going to be filthy. So it is an end of an era in Golden State because Klay Thompson's most likely going to walk in free agency and we just traded away Draymond. So we're going to keep Hashimura for the rest of the year. Let's try to find a D'Lo trade partner. All right, and we're going to send D'Lo back to the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, they're trying to win games because they don't have their first round pick. D'Lo was a very important player in Brooklyn in 2018 and 2019. Obviously, he helped build that reputation back up so they can go out and sign Kyrie and KD. So the fans would love this deal. We're getting Matisse Thibel and Bruno Fernando. Both are under contract next year, so I can make a move with them in the offseason. And we upgrade our defense there getting Thibel because we just lost a decent amount of defense since we traded away Draymond Green. And we also moved Gary Payton as well. So Steph's going to get 35 minutes for the rest of the year. I think we're going to give Clay 30. Moses Moody can get 28 minutes. We're going to start Jonathan Kuminga at the four. He's going to get 30. Sar or Sarge is going to go to the bench, yes. And then we're going to put Looney back in at the starting center position. He's going to get about 25 minutes a night. Wiggins is going to come off the bench with about 22 minutes, which is crazy. Chris Paul is going to get 28 minutes. I think I'm only going to give Sarge like 14. And then I'm going to go another 14 to Pojemski and another 14 to Trey Jackson Davis. Oh, wait, no, I have Hashimura now. So you know what? I don't even want to play Sarge. And we're going to lower Wiggins minutes a decent amount as well. And then we're going to give Hashimura probably about 18 a night. So we're still going to run a ton of small ball. We're probably going to go into the market looking for a big name center in the off season. I mean, I don't think Clint Capella is a big name, but that's somebody we could go after. So yeah, I don't know if this is going to make us better or worse, but I'll see you guys at the end of the season. We could also get Thibel in there if an injury does occur. And we have nobody extension eligible right now. We have been playing better though. We are 30 and 30. There we go. 31 and 30. So Luka Doncic wins MVP. It seems like that just happens every single year now. Shout out to Jalen Johnson winning most improved. LeBron won clutch player of the year. We didn't get anybody on an all-NBA team. No Steph Curry. Nobody on an all-defensive team either. And we didn't get Pojemski on our rookie team. Or Trace Jackson Davis. That is a shame. Uh-oh. We didn't even make the play-in tournament. Oh, my. All right. Uh, do I fire Steve Kerr? We finished the year 39 and 43. We missed out on the play tournament by two games. Uh oh, that is not good, man. That is not good. That would just have the Bay Area in an absolute frenzy. This would be so chaotic. I don't even know where they would go next. I mean, there is a chance the Warriors do not make the playoffs this year. That is not out of the equation for them this season. So I'm trying to figure out what we want to do in the offseason. We do have to pay Chris Paul $30 million, but it is tradable. It's an expiring deal. I could move him if I wanted to. The one thing we are stuck with, though, is Andrew Wiggins because nobody would trade for him. So we have to hopefully turn his career and his value around next year. And like we do have a very young team. Like I said, I'm moving on from Klay Thompson. We still have Brandon Pojemski, who should, like, he had a pretty good rookie year. I actually can't complain about that whatsoever. Forgot this team has Jerome Robinson. Like, we have Moses Moody, who had a good year three and is continuing to get better. Thibault's contract is pretty tradable. We have Kuminga. Rui Hashimura's contract is tradable. It's going to get interesting. It's also going to get pretty weird, I think. I wonder if, like, Mike Dunleavy... Nah, he wouldn't get fired after one year. But, yeah, I think we're going to keep Steve Kerr. I do think he's, like, an overrated head coach, but he's still a good head coach. You have the Flames, I guess, finals here between the Suns and the Heat. And let's see who wins. Jimmy versus Booker and KD and... Booker is your finals MVP. The Suns beat them in five. All right, yeah. So we could have some roster turnover next year for sure. We could enter into like a mini rebuild, but still try to come out on top at the end of this video to get Steph another ring before he retires. We're only going to get our first round pick if it hops into the top four. So we can't see it pop up at 11. All right, so the Pelicans are picking at 13. 12 is going to be Portland. Are we picking 11 or are we going to be able to move up into the top four? four please please nope yep we lost our first round pick oh that sucks so much wizards ended with number one raptors two hornets three spurs four pistons five we don't have any other first round picks so yeah we have no first round pick we didn't make the playoffs we're about to lose one of the best players in franchise history this offseason and clay thompson let me see if i can get steve clifford to be one of my shot doctors that's actually a good pickup 
All right, so we're here on draft night. I don't know if I'm going to make a trade. We could probably move Hashimura for a first round pick. We could maybe even move Thibel for a first round pick as well. All right, so we know that the Pacers definitely want to improve their defense. So we're going to see if I can get pick. I think this is 26. Yeah, 26 for Matisse Thibel. And I get a second rounder as well. They are going to agree to that. We free up $11 million. Uh, it'll be a little bit less than that since we are going to draft somebody in the first round. The Wizards with the number one overall pick are going to take Alexander Saar out of France um, and the NBL. Uh, uh, Ron Holland out of the G League Ignite goes to Toronto. Three, Charlotte takes a Tembona out of UC Santa Cruz. Okay. Jacoby Walter out of Baylor goes number four. And the Pistons at number five are trading the pick and Marvin Bagley for Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart. Whoa. I mean, that's actually a great trade for Detroit. They get some good defense and veteran leadership of former Depoy and Marcus Smart. They get a great secondary score, Desmond Bain, next to Cade Cunningham. I wonder why Memphis would do that. I mean, they'd take Zachary Reese share a project player, probably somebody that's not going to help them win now. Isaiah Collier goes to Houston, Mara to Chicago, Stefan Castle to Indiana, Nikola Topic to Utah, and Ryan Dunn to Memphis to wrap out the top 10. And just to look at pick 11, this is our pick. The Blazers trade it. With Dorian Finney-Smith for Jalen Brunson. <laughs> you can trade in every video. It's so annoying. The Knicks also gave up the 27th overall pick. So you're going to have Brunson, Scoot, Simon. What? Okay, whatever. And the Knicks end up taking Cody Williams, the brother of J-Dub out of Colorado. All right, so we are on the clock here at 26. We could look at Tower Smith, who's out of the G League Ignite. We could also look at Bobby Clintman, who's also out of the NBL. But we could use some more big man help. So uh, Zach Eady. <laughs> I kind of want to do it. I don't think he's going to be a first round pick. Grant Nelson's also an interesting idea. Um, but yeah, Khalil Ware out of Indiana probably makes the most sense. Uh, definitely a better prospect than Edie, but I never draft him. He's 22 years old. Ware is 20. He's seven foot four. I kind of want to do it. I don't know. Wait, I do have an early second rounder. Maybe we can get him in the second round. So I'm going to take Khalil Ware here. Let's hope he makes it out of the first. Come on. Come on. Bobby Clintman goes. And okay, he makes it out of the first round. What is our pick in the second round? Oh, it's pretty late. Um, let's see if I could package Bruno Fernando, my 53rd pick, and Santos to the Knicks for pick 34. Will Zach Eady fall to me at 34? Kwame Evans goes, come on. Okay. Let's see it. Let's okay. Bronny James goes. I was gonna take him. I was also interested about him. But yeah, I'm gonna take Zach Eady. So we get two centers in this draft. Kalo Ware out of Indiana and Zach Eady out of Purdue. Two Big Ten guys. And this is definitely gonna be interesting going forward. Eady's a 70, so is Kalo Ware. We have no team player options. LeBron is a free agent. Do we bring him to Golden State? So this means Kavon Mooney could be on the block. We're not gonna give anybody here the qualifying offer. Uh we do not have enough to get LeBron. Uh we will look at potential trades, though. I'm not done yet. All right, I want to see if the Knicks would give me their unprotected pick in 2028 for Kavan Mooney and two seconds as well. They agree to that. So we free up the 8 million. We're going to have a very young center duo of Zach Eady and Kalel Ware next year. We are going to have Chris Paul's $30 million off the books. But the thing is, we got to start paying Kuminga and we have Wiggins under control. This stinks. This is definitely one of the tougher realistic rebuilds to do right now. All right, I'm going to do this shit with the Philadelphia 76ers. They have bird rights and restricted rights on Tyrese Maxey. So they're going to bring him back. We don't need Chris Paul. We're not going to win a title next year. I don't want to lie to myself. We're going to get an unprotected first round pick from Toronto next year, which means may have some good value. We're going to do this trade. We also bring in B-Ball Paul. I have to give up a second that we just got from the Knicks in this deal. And yeah, the Chris Paul era in Golden State is over. B-Ball Paul maybe will be the starting center next year. We have plenty of big man depth going forward. Clay Thompson wants 20 mil a year, but to be honest with you, I told you, I think I'm going to move on. There's no point in re-signing him to a one-year deal. I'm going to give Grayson Allen a two-year deal though, with a team option on the second year. And I also don't mind like trying to compete next year. And I'm going to do the same type of contract to Reggie Jackson as we did to Grayson Allen. So yeah, we're renouncing the rights on Clay Thompson. His Golden State Warriors career is over. It's obviously an insanely tough decision to make, but we already moved on from Draymond. So this makes it a little bit easier. We do also have massive trade exceptions from Thibel, Looney, and Chris Paul, which is nice. We also reloaded on some draft capital as well. So we have the Raptors pick next year with that Knicks pick in 2028. Tyrese Maxey does go back to Philadelphia. The Raptors also signed Tobias Harris. They brought back Pascal Siakam. We do have their first round pick. So they're probably going to move on from OG and Anobi. They also might sign Clay Thompson. Clay's just going to stick it to us if he signs with them because we do own their first round pick. And he does sign a two-year deal with Toronto. He would obviously be a great mentor to Grady Dick. I feel like I probably got at least two to three more elite stuff years the second best player on this team is Ruby Hashimura, but I think we will have cap space next year. I mean, the thing with Wiggins is after this year, he still has two years left on his deal. I mean, I could find a deal equally as bad, or if that Raptors pick 
is solid value. Maybe it's pick 10. I could attach that pick to get off of him. Or maybe if a team is interested in like a Pojemski or one of our young centers or maybe Moses Moody, I have to attach them to entice the team to take on Wiggins' contract. All right, so this is going to be our 10-man rotation next year with Steph, Pojemski, Moody, Kuminga Ware in the starting five with Hashimura, Wiggins, Grayson Allen, Bebo Paul, and Trey Jackson Davis off the bench. First guy in if an injury does occur would probably be Zach Eady. And like Grayson Allen and Bebo Paul and probably Reggie Jackson are all potential trade candidates at the deadline. We are three and a half stars under Steve Kerr's perimeter centric system. And I definitely want to see at least a little bit from Zach Eady this year. So we start off the year with a 14 point loss to the Nuggets. I mean, I'm not surprised, but then we go out and we beat the Clippers by 31. I mean, that's definitely encouraging. So yeah, like I said, I want to see... Zach Eady at some point. There goes Moses Moody. So yep, yeah, like Wiggins, you're right there into the starting five. And we're probably going to see some Zach Eady minutes right now. Or Reggie Jackson. And we also signed Luke Kennard on the minimum as well. So yeah, this could be a very rocky first half of the season. It could be even brutal in the second half as well. But we do own our first round pick this year. So hey, maybe we end up as a lottery team. We get Cooper Flagg. Or we're in prime position to trade that pick with like Andrew Wiggins to like a team that's trading one of their stars to get Curry another guy before he ends up retiring. Oh my God. Steph Curry dislocates his left patella. He is out for the year. We were 14 and 9. I thought he was going to carry us, man. He was having an MVP caliber season two, and we lose our best player. If he retires from that, I'm going to be so upset. But yeah, time to completely change this rotation around. We've had so many injuries this year as well. I think I may experiment with Brandon Pojemski as our point guard. We could also play Reggie Jackson as well, but like, what's the point? All right, so this is pretty much what it's going to look like right now. Pojemski, Grayson Allen, hopefully he can get his trade value up. He's been an elite three-point shooter. Moses Moody, Kuminga, Kalel Ware, and then we have Hashimura, Wiggins, uh, TJD, Bebo Paul, and Zach Eady. We're 14 and 9. I'm okay with just kind of fizzling out and not making the playoffs. I mean, Jonathan Kuminga has been good. He's not been a good three point shooter, but I mean, he's probably going to be like definitely earning of that net ex next extension. Brandon Bojemski has been an absolute beast. He's definitely a building block for us. Wiggins, maybe he can get that trade value up. We'll see. Hashimura is also a trade candidate guy. Uh, I think I should have mentioned him before. Moody. Do you want that next extension? Maybe he's going to be a qualifying offer guy. Grayson Allen, probably going to sell him at the deadline. There is Zach Eady, who I'm excited to see in kind of a much larger role. Luke Kennard, maybe I'll be trading him at the deadline. Kalal Ware could definitely be better. So yeah, um, I'll see you guys at the trade deadline. Hopefully, like Reggie Jackson, Bebo Paul, Hashimura, like they're all healthy so I can at least look to move them. And hey, maybe we're still going to be around 500. All right, so we are here at the trade deadline. We are 25 and 27. So we're actually kind of holding our own right now. We are the eight seed in the Western Conference. In terms of points, per game we are there pretty much as the eighth best offensive team and we're a top 10 defensive team as well which is nice to see so we're definitely playing a lot better than i thought we would be at jonathan kaminga is leading us in scoring outside of steph curry obviously he's pretty much well <laughs> it says he's coming back in four to six weeks so maybe our season isn't over i still think i'm gonna do what i was expecting to do i'm gonna wait to move hashimura until the off season uh grayson allen He's good. He's 29 years old. I'll see what I can get for him, but if I can't get like anything crazy, I'm not going to move him. All right, so I couldn't find any trades that I really like. So Luke Kennard is a free agent at the end of the year. I could even probably bring him back in the offseason, maybe for the minimum. That's usually what he goes for, and he's a really good three-point shooter. And we're going to be moving Reggie Jackson. I was probably going to decline his team option to the Boston Celtics for Kevin McCuller, who is currently a Kansas wing, one of the, I think, the better defensive wings in the country right now. A little bit on the older side. Was a first-round pick, though, so I will have him under contract for the next couple of seasons. Could also so be featured in a trade and we get O'Shea Brissett who I probably let walk in the offseason so that is the only trade we are going to make we could re-sign Steph Curry we might as well hopefully that kind of defers his retirement and yeah we are going to get him back soon I could also move Grayson Allen and B-Ball Paul in the offseason they're uh, both under contract same with Rui Hashimura so I didn't feel like rushed to make a trade right now um, we are going to get Steph back at the end of the month and maybe we're still a playing tournament team something I should show you guys though where are the Toronto Raptors um, they are the four seed because we do own their uh, first round pick in this draft so yeah that was the Chris Paul trade I mean it'll make a little bit more sense if that picks in like the late teens early 20s that really wouldn't have made a lot of sense if it it was like an insane first. Oh my God. Philly's that bad. <laughs> I was going to try to get their first round pick. I don't think they owned it. Oh, Chris Paul's coming off the bench. They're not running like him and Maxi as the starting group together. I thought he got hurt for a second. I would have felt bad. Damn. We just went on a massive losing streak. Oh my God. <laughs> so we're in a nine game losing streak. Oh my God. 
We were just 35 and 36. One game below 500, and then we proceed to lose nine in a row. All right. Well, you know, that's just going to help out our draft pick. Ten in a row. Jeez, do we end the season on an 11-game losing streak? We do. <laughs> oh, my God. That is a shame since we had Steph back. Jokic wins MVP. Alexander Saar, rookie of the year. He was the number one overall pick. Uh, Russell Westbrook is your sixth man of the year. Evan Mobley, Depoy. Most improved goes to LaMelo Ball. Jalen Green, coach player of the year. Coach of the year, Quinn Schneider. Uh, I don't think we're going to get Steph on anything here just because he missed all that time. I don't even know if we're going to get anybody on any awards. Uh, we do get Kalel Ware on all rookie second team. <laughs> He, well, he wasn't good <laughs> at all, actually. So we did not make the playing tournament, which is probably better for our future. We may get a top pick in the draft at 35 and 47. We really tanked hard there towards the end of the year. That Raptors pick is probably going to be in the late teens, early 20s. Jonathan Kaminga, though, is definitely, I don't know. Well, we're going to see how much he's demanding. I don't want to pay him $30 million a year. Brandon Pojemski, though, good year two. He's still a solid shooting guard or combo guard. Moses Moody played better down the stretch. He had some injuries this year. But he may be a qualifying offer guy. I can't believe I got to pay Wiggins like 50 more million dollars after this year. Rui was solid. He could get traded though. So yeah, I'm just going to hopefully clear up some cap. It's tough because we're paying Steph Curry like 50 million dollars. So you have the OKC Thunder versus the Detroit Pistons in the final. Shout out to Sword Thompson and the Thunder winning five with Shea getting finals MVP. So man, the Thunder are just so good in the sim. Oh my God, LeBron signed with the Hornets. I don't even think Brody ended up getting drafted by them. So that could have made sense. The Celtics lost Reggie Jackson, Derek Rose, Kevin Love, and Al Horford all to retirement. LeBron and Russell Westbrook both head to the Hall of Fame. Bunch of jersey retirements here. Clay does retire. Okay, he does not go to the Hall of Fame. He will in real life. And we retir uh, retire his jersey. So at least, I mean, we didn't trade him. Probably should have traded him at last year's deadline. We have yet to make the playoffs in this video. We have the sixth projected pick going into the lottery. Don't drop me to seven. Don't drop me to eight. Come on, let's move the Warriors into the top four. All right, this could be big. Are they going to drop me to eight? Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, we don't drop to eight. Jason Tatum, pending free agent. All right. Bulls at seven or is it going to be Warriors at seven? Ugh, we dropped to seven. All right. That sucks. We don't get lucky here in the lottery. The Kings get the number one overall pick. Thunder at two and they just won the finals. Good Lord. Sixers at three. <laughs> Damn, Chris Paul. I was hoping to get you over before you retired. Bulls at four via Portland and Bulls at five. So that is nice for their rebuild. I'm not going to fire Steve Kerr. He's just still has such good ratings, but maybe this will be the last attempt last year of it we're gonna hire billy donovan to be an assistant him and steve clifford that's pretty good like coaching experience and head coaching experience as assistants on this team so going into draft night we have a few players under contract um i think we could look to acquire another first round pick we could even look to move up in the draft i do have on a normal class for this i definitely like to use like real 2024 classes but you guys can let me know about the 2025 ones we could definitely get a good prospect for sure at pick number seven we could look to trade up like i would really like vj edge Combe, Trey Johnson, or Ian Jackson, all shooting guard prospects from like big name universities. So Draymond Green is actually in Milwaukee. Now he got traded last year to the Bucks. All right. So the Celtics had a bunch of retirements. We're going to be sending them Rui Hashimura for a 2026 Celtics top five protected first and a swap horse with San Antonio in 28. I believe that is from the Derek White deal. So we free up 18 million. We get some more draft capital if there was ever going to be a trade. We have the 23rd pick via the Raptors. We have the Knicks second rounder at 46. Let's see who's available at number seven as the Kings with the number one overall pick select Ace Bailey out of Rutgers. Number two is Dylan Harper also out of Rutgers. Okay. At least they didn't take Cooper Flagg and Cooper Flagg and Embiid in that front court in Philly. That's pretty nasty. Chicago at four. They take uh, Javiel Bethea out of Miami. Carter Knox out of high school or G League or whatever it is. Uh, Mystery goes right before us. Okay, I don't think I was going to take him. So we have the pick of the litter of those shooting guards that I mentioned. We have Dink Patel there. You have Drake Powell, Ian Jackson, Liam McNeely. We know he's a stud. I think I'm going to go with Trey Johnson out of Texas. I could like VJ Edgecombe as well, but I'm going to take Trey Johnson. Hopefully he can make an immediate impact right away. All right, so I'm going to be doing this trade with the New York Knicks. Emmanuel Quickly is probably going to be our sixth man. He's been struggling basically in New York to be efficient. He had a well below true shooting average next year. He's due $14 million basically for the next three years. I'm going to be slotting them Boston's top five protected pick last year that we just got in the Rui deal. Um, that could be, you know what, instead of giving up that one, could I maybe just get it done with that Spurs swap horse just because they might lose Tatum. Uh, that pick could be a value. We're going to give them Bebo Paul. We're going to give them 23 and we're going to give them 46. They agree to that. We also got a second round back in that. The Knicks take Xavier Booker out of Michigan State here. All right, so we're going to pick up the team option on Grayson Allen. Zach Eady for 3.39 mil. I should. And Brandon Pojemski, that's a no-brainer. So the clock is ticking on Kirby, right? M uh, Moses Moody and Kaminga, uh, we're going to offer them deals. 
All right, here's where I think I have cap space. Um, Not as much as I thought. I guess we took on a little bit more with that quickly deal. So I think we had like 35 million. I could definitely free up probably around $10 million with trades. So like Mitchell's probably not realistic. I mean, Miles Turner is a good rim protector. Do I want Clint Capella? Because I have to sign these guys, but then if I want to keep Kuminga and Moody, I can't kind of renounce their cap hold. So this does get very difficult to build this team with Curry's like insane contract. But I do believe, does it go down next year or is it one more year? Okay, I saved $16 million on his contract next year. Wiggins would become tradable at $30 million. Bro, this is crazy that I may like not be able to win a chip till like Curry's 39. All right, so Kuminga's cap hold is 15 million. Moody's at 11 million. Good lord. So that means I like basically can't even afford Clint Capella. I'm going to give Moses Moody a three year, $36 million extension. I'm not giving Kuminga $37 million. So he could be a uh, qual uh, qualifying offer guy. Yeah, I'm just not paying him that much. I hope no team offers him a deal either. Tatum ends up going to Chicago. So that Celtics pick could have some good value to it as Jalen Green goes to the Jazz. Brunson resigns in Portland. Okay. And it looks like we are going to get Kuminga back on the qualifying offer worth around $10 million. Hey, if I think I should trade him at the deadline, I will. I mean, Quickly is also another trade asset. He's going to be our sixth man because Bozemski is going to start at the two, but that could be Trey Johnson at the end of the year. I'm really trying to figure out this team. I know it's taken a little bit longer than expected, but uh, I just need to build a well-balanced roster either to withstand injuries. I can't just have like seven good players and just the rest of the reserves being like veteran minimum 73 overalls because we're screwed if an injury happens. All right, so I don't even know if Trace Jackson Davis is going to play this year because I do want to give at least some minutes to Zach Eady. And I think for Grayson Allen, I may not even play him either. So we're going to go 24 minutes to Zach Eady and Kalil Ware. We're going to go about 28 to Quickly, 24 to Trey Johnson. Uh, we're going to do about 15 to Wiggins. I mean, he's basically done as a warrior. We'll do 31 to Kaminga and we'll do 30 to Pojemski, 27 to Moody. Three and a half star perimeter centric. Hey, we were a pretty good team before Steph went down next year or excuse me, last year. So maybe we'll be fine here in year number. What is this? Three. <laughs> Off to a good start. Damn, Moses Moody also just gets hurt a ton. All right, so it is the trade deadline and we are 18 and 32. I'm really gonna try to have to pull off like the worst the first in one year. We just gotta get that second guy next to Steph. We just haven't really had the chance to do so. Maybe Steph is aging a little bit. Oh man, this is this is tough. This is tough for real. Like I really want to, or I tried to go cheap at center with like Ware and Edie and I think they're both may be fine, but it's not really translating to wins. I mean, we're gonna get Pojemski one more year on the, his like really good rookie deal. Trey Johnson, I think, is going to continue to get better. I I think I'm done with Kaminga. I, I think we're going to probably let him walk. I mean, I could actually look to trade him right now. Quickly, I think it's been a fine six-man. Nothing crazy. All right, and I am doing this trade. We are sending Jonathan Kaminga to the New Orleans Pelicans in a second rounder. I'm getting Herbert Jones, who has not been much of a scorer this year, but we know how good of an impact defender he can be. And I'm also getting a future Pelicans first rounder. So we're, we're still stacking some first rounders for the future. I do have my first round pick at the end of the year. We'll take a look at the Celtics record. Um, in 2028, I have three different first round picks. And the Boston Celtics are the second worst team in the East. So we hope that pick is not in the top five, but either way, if the Celtics keep it, that value next year um, will skyrocket and I could eventually move it. We're going to hopefully trade Wiggins in the offseason. Curry's contract declined 16 million. Every other contract is tradable. I'll probably move Moses Moody in the offseason as well. And the Knicks are desperate for shooting. So they're about to give me a water protected first for Grayson Allen. That actually may be one of the better trades of the video. So I will see you guys at the end of the year unless there's a contract extension to get done. Definitely not Wiggins because Wait, does that... I think it means it picks up his uh, player option for $30 million. I wasn't going to try to scheme the system anyway. I really hope that there's a big name free agent because we still have stuff to do recruiting. We're still a big market like one of the bigger markets in the NBA. We should have a max contract. So I'm hoping that there's a big name free agent. I don't know if it's going to be like a Luka or Jokic or somebody like that, but we'll see. Damn, we actually won some games there towards the end of the year. I was hoping that we were going to end up with like a top five pick in the draft. Wemby wins MVP. In year number three, shout out to him. Uh, Cooper Flagg is your rookie of the year. Nikola Topic, sixth man of the year. Wimbanyama Depoy, most improved, goes to Jaden Ivey. Jalen Green, coach player of the year. And the Spurs head coach, Mitch Johnson, who uh, succeeded Greg Popovich, ends up with coach of the year. Yep, Luka Doncic is a free agent. We'll keep an eye on that. Jason Tatum in Chicago. That is pretty cool. Um, I feel like it's cool to get, like, Chicago got a star. I don't know if he's ever going to leave Boston, though. We do get Herb Jones on all defensive second team. Love that. And we did get Trey Johnson on an all-rookie first team. So we did not make the uh, playoffs, obviously. We ended up with a 35-47 and 47 record. We're kind of in that purgatory stage, which is not where we want to be. Um, we're hoping... Ah, oh, Boston. Damn. Did they finish with the worst record? Okay, so we're not... We're There's 0% chance we get that pick. 
because the worst it could be is number five. So that is kind of a shame. Going forward, Steph is probably the number two offensively. I'm really hoping he doesn't retire this year. Um, I feel like a lot of stuff is wide open, but priority number one is to get off of the Wiggins contract this offseason. It's expiring, so it is possible to get off of it and not like fleece the CPU or just do some type of unfair trade. You have the Thunder and the Cavs in the finals and the Cavs win in seven with Darius Garland being your finals MVP. Shout out to Cleveland. There goes Chris Paul. He did spend two years in Philly, so at least they got the last like legs out of him. A uh, bunch of notable names are retiring this season as well. We'll definitely see a couple people in the Hall of Fame, James Harden and Chris Paul. Draft lottery time. Um, I'm not going to watch it because I've been pretty unlucky with that. So let's see. Does our number 10 pick jump up? It does not. It stays at number 10. That Bucks pick ended up at number three. We weren't really going to keep it anyway. Uh, Steve Kerr's got one year left on his deal. I'm not going to fire him yet, even though he would definitely be fired if this is how the next three years of the Warriors went in real life. We also have the 16th overall pick via the Knicks. Wait, I completely missed that. I guess since, yeah, they were in a lottery team and that was that must have been from the Grayson Allen trade. I will take that. So the number one overall pick is Alonzo James. I don't think he's related to LeBron James. Uh, he's out of Auburn. Uh, he's a 19-year-old small forward, 79 overall. Sheldon Bullard out of Michigan goes number two. And the Celtics at number three take Argento Conti out of Italy. Okay. All right, we're going to take seven further. Bernie Good in here out of George Mason with the 10th overall selection. We get him under a four-year contract. Zach Eadie's also a free agent um, at the end or this con or this summer. I don't know if I was going to pay him as Boston just made a trade right there. And I'm going to take Chad Bailey here who I was kind of targeting. It was either him or Derek Cotton. I think we're going to take Chad Bailey, but there's a chance him out of Iowa. Like we could trade him. So yeah, let's sign Bernie Gooden and Chad Bailey. Team player options. Wiggins obviously opts in. I'm going to pick up uh, TJD's contract where McCuller, Pojemski, this could be a very big off season. Um, yeah, I don't want Trey Young. I'm going to offer Luka Doncic a lot of money if I can. We're going to extend the qualifying offer to Zach Eady. All right, so the Portland Trailblazers are kind of rebuilding. Um, we're going to take on Spencer Dinwiddie. I'm giving them Andrew Wiggins, but to get off of that Wiggins contract, I'm giving them Chad Bailey, who just took 16th overall, and Kevin McCuller, who we got a couple years ago, if you remember. And we're getting Spencer Dinwiddie. All right, we have another trade lined up. I'm moving Moses Moody, a Pelicans lottery protected that was in the Herb Jones deal, and a Knicks first rounder in 28 for Jaime Jaquez, who's in the last year of his rookie contract. And I have to take on Hamadou Diallo's $4 million deal. I don't even know if they're going to accept this. I think they will. Uh, they want Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't want Jeremy Grant. Okay, never mind. I'm not getting uh, Hawkes. All right, so we are going to flip Dinwiddie to San Antonio for two second rounders. We get off that $8.5 million. And before I think about moving Moses Moody, uh, we are, yeah. So if I want Luca, I have to trade Moses Moody. I don't even know who else we'd want on this team because everybody else is a guard or we bring back KD. Can KD and Curry win a championship uh, one last year together? All right, I think I'm actually doing a notable big trade. We're going to be sending Emmanuel quickly and Moses Moody to the Cavs for Jared Allen. I'll be freeing up around $3 million with this deal. And will they accept it? They want Kalel Ware for Isaac Okoro. That is not happening, but I will throw in multiple second rounders and that gets it done. So that means I probably don't need Kalel Ware. Um, so I think Bernie Gooden and Jared Allen will be that center duo. I'm just scared if I try to get Luka, he's just going to re-sign with Dallas. But I feel like if I don't even try it, it's such a waste. I don't even think I'm going to be able to afford him though, sadly. So I'm not going to really try to free up that much money, but then I can't even afford KD either. So I can do two things. I could try to sign Mikel Bridges. I could try to sign Jaron Jackson Jr. Or I could wait to see if like Paolo Bancaro somehow does not He's got to return to Miami or Orlando though. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I mean, Jalen Green looks really good. Could I bump Trey Johnson? Well, I could always probably put Herb Jones at the small forward position. Okay. All right. Let me offer Jalen Green a deal. Um, I'll give him a player option on the last year. I'm also going to offer, I think, I really want Jabari Smith, but... You know what? I will offer him the max contract. Maybe they wouldn't match that. I think he would actually be a perfect power forward for us and we could keep developing him. So I'm able to sign Jalen Green. He looks like he could be a number one, man. He's 24. He spent one year to kind of revive his career, show teams that he could be a number one in Utah. And you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to choose him over Jabari Smith Jr. Uh, they don't even match that deal, but yeah, we're going to get that done. We get Jalen Green. I'm probably going to move Herb Jones to the small forward position. Yep, we are going to do that. But now we definitely need some power forward depth. Hey! Rui Hashimura, you want to come back here to Golden State? I would actually love that three-year deal. Can we get it done? 
Boom. And I think we actually would have gotten Luca because he didn't sign right away. Uh, maybe we would have. Maybe we wouldn't. I don't know. All right. We're also going to bring back Grayson Allen on a one-year deal. Najee Marshall on a one-year deal. And then the last player was probably going to be just like Zach Eady back on the qualifying offer. And we get Zach uh, Eady back on the QO. So could this team win a championship next year? No, I don't... <sighs> I don't think so, but I think we could definitely make the playoffs. Okay, so we could start Rui Hashimura at the four. I think I'm going to do that, but I kind of also wanted to see what Trey Jackson Davis could do. But I think he's going to be a guy off the bench. I think we have a deep enough team right now. Uh, I think I'd rather play TJD over Grayson Allen. So it's probably going to be like 15 minutes to these guys. Uh, Brandon Bojemski can get 23 minutes a night. 28 to Trey Johnson as a six man. I'm cool with these minute allocations. Uh, yeah, so let's see what this team can do. I'm excited. Hopefully, us getting Jalen Green can mean we can be back in the playoffs. We also traded for Jared Allen. And if that's not the case, Steve Kerr is gone. Oh my God, 2K hates me. Steph Curry, broken right kneecap. He's out two to four months. Get out of here. Oh my God, man. My injury luck was not this bad in the Cavs rebuild or the Hornets rebuild, but this is just brutal today. And there goes Jalen Green. Just why not? All my top guys are just getting hurt. All right, so Herb Jones does not want to re-sign with us. Zach Eadie's a free agent at the end of the year. I'm going to trade them two in a second rounder for Christian Brown and Jalen Smith. So the Nuggets get a stud defender if they're trying to win another championship. We're 24 and 26 on the season. I think we're still going to make the playoffs this year. We're currently the nine seed. We're seventh in offense. We're pretty much not one of the better defensive teams. So it will hurt giving up Herb Jones. For some reason, like Jared Allen is just not happy on this team. But I do think... We're pretty good. I think Trey Johnson's a really good sixth man. I could even make him a small forward too, eventually, if I do want to start him. We can move Jalen Smith in the offseason. We could also move Christian Brown if we wanted to. And now I think we do have depth to withstand injuries because we've been very injury prone this whole year. And we are going to finish above 500 for the first time in a while. I don't think we're collapsing. All we have to do is basically win one more game and it's a guarantee. We've lost three in a row, but there we go. We end up finishing above 500 this year. Luka Doncic is your MVP. Uh, this boy, this guy is your rookie of the year. 33rd overall pick out of green. Reese, Ron Holland, sixth man of the year in Toronto. Wemby, Depoy, Taylor Hendricks, most improved. RJ Barrett, clutch player of the year. Okay. We did get Bernie Gooden on all rookie second team. And we finished the season as the eighth seed. All right. So um, that is improvement. We were 47 to 35. The Western Conference was very good this season. Here were the end of the season stats as Jalen Green led the team in scoring. Followed by Steph Curry, Trey Johnson, Brandon Pojemski, Jared Allen. There's Jalen Smith, Rui Hashimura, Christian Brown, Gooden, Grayson Allen. Like this team has a ton of depth. We saw some Jalen Pickett this year. Still have Cole where uh, Tracy Jack or Trace Jackson Davis and then Najee Marshall, just everybody got in. So we're going to go with a three-man bench for the playoffs. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be Gooden, Pozemski, uh, Trey Johnson. They're each going to get 30 and then Gooden will get 20. We're going to go 33 to Allen. I'd like to go 38 to Green, 35 to Curry. Let's go probably 28 to Christian Brown. Um, and then let's go 27 to uh, Rui Hashimura. So can we beat the San Antonio Spurs in the first leg of the playing tournament? please. Yes, we... Oh, no, wait, we didn't. We lost. And we lost by 35. Okay. Um, Steph shot three for 12. Jalen Green, seven for 19. All right, well, that's not good. Maybe I should have a nine-man bench or just like a nine-man rotation, yeah. So I'm giving the last spot to TJD and then we lost. Okay, I didn't mean to simulate the whole point tournament, but we lost to the Lakers, damn it, man. We lost 126-111, so we're still probably pretty far of where I'd like to be, but at least we're seeing some improvement. Nikola Topic is your Western Conference Finals MVP and LaMelo Ball in the East. And the Hornets beat the Jazz in six and LaMelo Ball was your Finals MVP. There goes Drew Holiday, Paul George, Vucevic. Paul George heading to the Hall of Fame. So that Boston pick is in potentially the top 10. Our pick is going to be at 14. Can that Celtics pick get some luck? And it does. It shoots up to number three. How about that? Our pick is still at 14. All right, man. That is huge. We needed some luck to go our way. Steve Kerr. Do I want to bring him back? Adrian Griffin's a free agent. So is Mike Brown, or he's an assistant. Ty Lu, Darvin Ham, Jamal Mosley. You know what? I'm going to have Jamal Mosley. He's got really good ratings. He turned his maybe career and uh, made a reputation for himself in Orlando. I think we got to move on from Steve Kerr and we get Jamal Mosley, who has actually elite ratings. All right, we are making a massive trade here with the Memphis Grizzlies. And honestly, I'm pretty cool with it. Christian Brown, Rui Hashimura, and pick three to move down four spots to pick seven and acquire Triple J, who has two years left on his deal. They haven't had a lot of success with him in Memphis, probably a little bit overpaid, but him and Jared Allen in the front court could be something. We're going to make this blockbuster trade on technically draft night. So the Denver Nuggets have the number one overall pick. <laughs> I guess that didn't work out for Herb Jones. Uh, Warren Stewart Jr. out of Illinois is the number one overall pick. Nets at two take Albert May. Grizzlies at three take Hal West. 
um, Hal West out of Boston College. So I don't think we're really missing out on anybody there. All right, so we're making this trade with the Utah Jazz. I'm giving up 16 Jalen Smith, and um, we're going to be sending them to Utah for Utah's 2029 unprotected first and a swap best with Cleveland. We're still on the clock though. And I'm going to take Stacy Bell, a seven foot two center out of Cincy. And he's a 76 overall. Team bar options, picking it up on Trey Johnson. Khalil Ware. I think I'm going to decline that $5.1 million team option though. We just have too many centers with Gooden. We just drafted one and obviously we have Jared Allen on the team. We're going to pay Brandon Bozemski a decent amount of money this offseason. Yeah, Khalil Ware wants $18 million. Get out of here. What? I would like to bring back uh, Trace Jackson Davis on a one-year deal and we get him on that. And then we're going to sign Brandon Pojemski to a three-year deal worth around $33 million and he's going to agree with that. Um, it's actually $38 million. So Wemby uh, resigns with the Spurs. Giannis goes to the Suns. KD, that's pretty cool. Goes back home. He goes to the Wizards who's going to play with them before he retires. RJ Barrett is the Giannis replacement. All right, try selling that to their fans. Grizzlies now go out and spend on Tower Hero. Damian Millard goes to the Knicks. We could also sign Bradley Beal if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to finally get Jaime Hawkes though. I'm going to give him a three-year deal. This is basically our mid-level exception, about $14 million a year. And boom, there we go. We pick him up. That's what I'm talking about. And then we're going to sign three veteran minimums, Jose Alvarado, Buddy Heald, and Javon Carter. So we do see Steph Curry start to regress. We'll see if Jalen Green can carry this team. I mean, Steph could still be a good number two. We have a really good defensive front court and hopefully Trey Johnson can maybe take that step this year. He's going to start at the three for us. All right. So it's going to be Curry, Green, Johnson, Jackson Jr., Allen with Hawkes Jr., Pozemski, Bernie Gooden, and Stacey Bell off the bench. System proficiency is four and a half star balanced under Jamal Mosley. Could this be the year the Warriors maybe make a run in the playoffs? We start off the season with a dub. Let's go. All right, so we're here at the trade deadline and we've had our best first half yet. We're 31 and 19. We could definitely get 50 wins this season. I don't think I'm going to make any moves at the deadline besides can we re-sign Steph Curry? One year, $38 million. Let's get it done. If we take a look at where we are in the Western Conference, we're currently the fourth seed right now in points per game. We are third. In allowed points per game, we're also third. So maybe I think we're going to finish maybe third by the end of the year. Jalen Green is leading us in scoring, followed by Trey Johnson, Steph Curry, Brandon Pojemski, Jared Allen, Yep, there's Triple J, but at least he's giving us 2.3 blocks tonight, and we just really needed somewhat of a defender there at the four spot. So Luka wins another MVP. He is still in Dallas. Shout out to Ron Holland winning six man of the year two years in a row. Jock Vaughn won coach of the year on the Sixers, so he is their coach now. You got Amen Thompson, Cooper Flag, Isaiah Collier, John Moran, and Alexander Saar on all NBA second team. And we finished the year as the two seed. We're going up against Wimbanyama, Jacoby Walter, Vassell in round number one. Jalen Green was our leading scorer. Trey Johnson was number two. Then you have Steph Pozemski, who was very efficient. I'm glad we were able to extend him. Then you got Jared Allen, Triple J, Jaime Jaquez, uh, Gooden and Bell. So yeah, like, I'm not like, I don't feel bad about what I gave up for Triple J. Like he's not a great offensive player. I'm really just acquiring him for his defense. But the thing is, we are fully healthy for the playoffs. Can we beat the Spurs in round number one? We do win game one by 24. All right, that feels good. We had four guys score north of 20 points per game there, or just 20 points in that game. We take a 2-0 lead. We end up winning by 51 points. Steph with 41 in 33 minutes at the age of 40. Come on, it's gotta be this year if we wanna give Steph a ring. We win by 12, Webby goes off. It was not enough because Jalen Green gives me 50. Game number four goes to the Warriors. That's a sweep. We win by 27. We advance to take on the Pelicans. So the Pelicans have an interesting backcourt. They have honestly not a great team. Do they have some injuries? Yes, they do. Okay, Zion Williamson hurt. VJ Edgecombe hurt, um, and they should be getting possibly both of them back this series. Zion may just miss game one. We do win game one though. Green with 28, 10, and five. Steph with 26 and 12. 26 for Trey Johnson. Zion played in this game. Maybe he's on a minutes restriction. We are undefeated in the playoffs. Jalen Green is averaging 31.8 points so far in these first six games. Zion only took eight shots. We go up 3-0. We end up winning by 12. Steph with 36 and 10. He's going out with a bang in his possible final season of his career. Game four. Boom. 8-0 starts in the playoffs. Who are we taking on? Give me the thunder. Give me the thunder. Okay, we're taking on Portland. So Portland, um, do they still have uh, Andrew Wiggins? I don't think so. They still have Jalen Brunson, still have Anthony Simons and DeAndre Aiden and Shaden Sharp. They did have the rookie of the year, Reese Beekman as well, who was the 36th overall pick out of Virginia. That sounds like a Malcolm Brogdon to me. Game number one, we are still undefeated in the playoffs. We win by six. Oh, and I'm not scared of this team. Game two, we win. We are undefeated. Jamal Mosley, did I need you all along? 
We lose our first game in overtime in game three. All right, it was bound to happen. Game number four goes to Golden State. We end up winning by 16 points. Pojemski with 29 in 22 minutes. Give me the, uh, not a gentleman sweep, but we win in five. Jalen Green gives me 34. Pojemski gives me 27. 17 rebounds for Jared Allen. And we're going to the finals to take on the Chicago Bulls. We have Jeremy Shohan. They were the two seed. We almost took on a seven-seeded Cavs team. But um, yeah, we are going up against Jason Tatum. Jeremy Shohan, Lonzo Ball, Joel Bethea, Ludor, that is pretty good defensively. Wallace Grimes, Capella off the bench as well. Warriors versus Chicago. Game one goes to Golden State by four. This is going to be a close series. Steph with 45. Is he going to own Tatum again in the finals? Came to we win by two in overtime. I would be so pissed if I was Chicago right now. Man, Steph Curry may win finals MVP at age 40. We up 3-0. We are dominating the playoffs. We won by four and by two in the first two games, and we won by 26. Come on, are we going to sweep them? Are they not even going to put up a fight? Are we going to go 16 and one in the playoffs? Was getting Triple J, a championship caliber move. Same with Jaime Jaquez. Come on, we're up by 13. Oh yeah, up by 20 with four minutes to go. Man, we had so many down years in the first like half of this video. Like we had some gross seasons, but here we are building a well-balanced team to possibly get a ring. We went through so many guys like Emmanuel quickly. Uh, there's a triple J three. We went through Herb Jones. He knocks that down. We went through Zach Eady. We went through Kalel Ware. Just that center duo didn't work out. We traded Draymond Green. We let Klay Thompson walk. We ended up trading Chris Paul and Andrew Wiggins. As you have Jared Allen down there, that is a risky pass. Yeah, that was stupid by me. Triple J block. Oh no, an N one. Joel Bethea does complete the three-point play. Steph only has 15 points here. Did Jalen Green foul out? Damn, it looks like it because he was probably killing it. 2011 and 7 for Trey Johnson. Man, can a 40-year-old Steph still run floppy at an elite level? Let's see. Is he going to get open? Is Lonzo is a good defender. Lonzo can't stay with him because it's Steph Curry. He's going to hit that, right? Oh my god. Too good. I hope Steph gets finals MVP, but it may end up going to Jalen Green. Like, what a signing that was for us. And we got to turn his career around, which was pretty dope. I think we had really good assistant coaches and Steve Clifford and Billy Donovan. Like, those are NBA head coach caliber guys. And we had them as assistants. Yeah, Tatum gets some space there. He misses that. Hawkins picks up his eighth rebound. Kick it up to Steph. I kind of just want... Oh, I kind of wanted to pull up there. All right, Triple J, give me the screen. And we're taking an off-balance three with Steph. If he hits that, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh my God, <laughs> it almost went in. Jared Allen, all right, I'm not taking a three with you. Let's see what how my Hawkins can do. I'm excited. I haven't really used him in 2K a lot. Um... <laughs> And maybe I shouldn't start today. So we ended up winning 135, 114. And Steph at age 40 gets a finals MVP. That is so sick, man. And he goes out on top. I love it. He retired. I am so happy he retired on top. Pause. So I hope you guys did enjoy this Golden State Warriors rebuild. Let me know if you did by dropping a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how you would have rebuilt them and which team we should tackle next. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.